Hi everyone, I'm Margie O'Brien with Capital TV. This is another Capital Spotlight, and we're now entering week four of the session. Senator Louis De Palma is joining me. Lou, yep. I'm wondering what the overall feeling is. Are you satisfied with how things are progressing? I know initially when people came back for the first day of the session, there was this great morale in the building that you were ready to get to work. I think we are. I think we're seeing some of the work that was done at the end of last session, which abruptly ended, coming back already, hearings already being had. So I think people are, uh, have a consensus that things are happening and we're going to move things forward pretty quickly because a fair amount of the work has been done from last year to move those over the goal line. And is that a good feeling that you can show Rhode Islanders that you're not only creating legislation, but it's getting passed and moving forward? I believe so, but I think it's more importantly that we're doing the right things. At the end of the day, if legislation is what we need to do, then we need to do that. But we shouldn't, we shouldn't resort to saying, I'm going to put a bill in for this and a bill for that. We should figure out how to make the problem, system work with the system that we have rather than figuring out how to change it. If we have, need to change it with legislation, which is a state statute, then we do that. But I think it's, uh, things are moving, moving in the right direction. And how is that important for Rhode Islanders to think that things are getting better in Rhode Island, that we're turning the corner? I think they need to, uh, like myself, uh, I'm a facts and data kind of person. I'm an engineer, so I need to see results. We can talk the game for the, to the nth degree. We can say we have a plan. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. When they see results happening and they see how it impacts them positively, then they're going to have the realization that things are moving in the right direction and they can have confidence that more will happen because of that. Are there some past examples that you could share with us how things did move in the right direction that you can check off sort of as a success? Uh, so I believe there is, and so it sort of ties to um, the road works work that, the work that we're doing now. Several years ago, and I've been involved with trans sustainable, sustainable transportation funding for many years on the Senate side, and we're co-chairing a commission with Senator Pichardo, and then on a joint uh, commission we have looking at the Sakana River Bridge uh, issue. Because of that, and we identified with many state officials a billion-dollar problem. Well, we came forward with an answer to half of that problem. We saw that put in place. We saw things move in the right direction. And I think we're going to see over time it's going to take uh, vigilance, it's going to take oversight to ensure that we actually do what we said we we're going to do. But I think that, that was a step moving us in the right direction of, and that people can actually realize and also see the results of that road being paved, that bridge being fixed, that storm drain being cleaned. And I'm sure that that feeling carries over with the discussion now with refixing the Rhode Island infrastructure, the roadways here. How do you make sure people are feeling good with the progress that we've seen so far on that project? I think the, uh, there's three things we need to do as legislators. And you know, when I was on a council in Middletown for four years, same thing. We need to hear, we need to listen, and we need to act. I think people, if they look at the original, any bill, so in this case here, from, let's talk about roadworks, if we look at what was originally introduced uh, last April or May, and we see what ended up in the we heard, we listened, and we acted. I want to thank the federal delegation for giving us more funds, more federal money via the FAST Act, additional $20 million a year over the five years, $100 million. Will that change the roadworks bill when it comes out in uh, revision two or revision three or phase two that we're expecting to see soon? Categorically, absolutely. I'm convinced that it will. I think people will see that there'll be other changes in there as well. I'm cautiously optimistic that we're going to see a very uh, an enhanced bill that will have shown that we heard, that we listened, and that we're acting. Will everybody like it? I can't carry, categorically say that. This is a priority, though. Do you feel that it's going to get done this session? Yes. Yes. I like that answer. It, yes. From a facts and data perspective, yes, it needs, it needs to get done. It's an issue of fairness. It's an issue of equity. It's an issue of safety. Uh, my wife and I are from Connecticut. We've been down Rhode Island in our 33rd year. Uh, I'm down in the... Uh, Bridgeport, Fairfield area, where GE is from. In fact, I went to high school up the street from where GE is. I know where the building is. Uh, but we lived in Connecticut when the Mianus River Bridge collapsed. This is I-95. So we're talking I-95. A chunk of the highway just fell into the ocean, fell into the river, Mianus River. People lost their lives. So from a safety perspective, why that happened, I've got the details of it. Bad inspection, no repair. We saw what happened to the uh, Sakana Bridge. We didn't repair it. We had to replace it. We need to get in behind the work of repairing, not replacing. By repairing, it's going to cost us less. We'll get the work done sooner, and that's why we need to start that quicker and not never have, again, an issue like the Mianus River Bridge where I can't remember the exact number, but many people died because of uh, road clubs. Well, it's good to hear your optimism. Yes, it is going to get done. Senator Lou De Palma, thanks for joining us. And that was another Capital Spotlight. I'm Margie O'Brien, Capital TV.